In this video, traders are going to have coronavirus. What now for the markets? Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. Right, so quick video update on what's going on with coronavirus, where are the markets going to go, what are the things we think about as traders. Okay, so. As I'm doing this, guys, the market is ripping higher. NASDAQ is at all-time highs now. All the tech stocks are all-time highs. There's a bunch of momentum names that just keep going and going and going. However, when you contrast that to some other stocks, they are still not far off lows. They're not at lows. They had a little bit of a rally from some of the banks and some of the cruise liners and some of those ones that have been adversely affected, the airlines specifically because of the kind of plans to get back to, to normal. But... There's an interesting stuff going on here, guys. And one of the things that we kind of think about is, okay, we seem to have a big disconnect with the economy and the markets. And that's the question that everyone kind of thinks, well, it's nothing like the economy. I mean, you see businesses shutting down, they're not gonna reopen. You see big job losses for big companies like BP recently announced them. You know, we see a lot of car manufacturers or car dealerships cutting jobs. A lot of companies are cutting thousands and thousands of jobs. And so on the face of it, you think, well, why would the market rally and the fact that all these people are getting laid off? Where are these guys going to go? Now, there's a couple of answers for that. One is that does the market really represent the economy? You know, when you think about specifically the NASDAQ, for example, full of tech stocks, heavily weighted with tech, those guys are doing okay. You know, Amazon, of course, killing it. You know, a lot of the uh, home-based business or virtual-based business like Netflix, you know, like any uh, kind of Peloton, a little bit like this. But you know, a lot of these companies that are tech-based aren't as impacted because a lot of the companies, uh, people can work from home, staff can work from home, and the revenue has increased. And even when it dies off a little bit, when everyone goes back to spending in bricks and mortar, they're still going to have a strong base. They've still got good margins. They've got lots of capital behind them. And so this is where this money's flowing in. And there's also something else I think about, guys, before we go back to the point of of the disconnect between the economy and um, the markets is that you know people have got to put money somewhere there is still money around the place and you think about what's going on uh, with bonds you think about the interest rates and returns you're getting with bonds it's 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 nowhere it to make any any point to do that you know so you think oh, where are people going to put their money are they going to put it in gold maybe they've got some allocations there but people with billions have got it put somewhere and maybe they think, you know what, it makes more sense for me to put it into the biggest economy in the world, into these companies that are doing well that I know are gonna be around, even if I end up losing a little bit on the capital. So you like your Amazons, like your Apples, like all these companies, and so the money allocation just going further and further into those. So that's one reason, potentially, the other thing, of guys, you've got to remember the constituents of the indices don't always represent the economy. So that's why we've seen a little bit of lag with the FTSE 100 compared to, say, NASDAQ, while the Dow's lagging a little bit compared to S&P 5. All these kind of things, you've got to remember that the indices are literally a basket of stocks. And if those stocks happen to be you know, not very strong stocks, then the index isn't going to push up. So that's one thing uh, to kind of think about. The other thing is, guys, is that there is also something to be considered that many people with large amounts of money, not us, we're looking for kind of trades, but many people who are investing are thinking years ahead. So they're allocating capital based on what's happening years ahead. And whilst they may say, okay, well, you know what, maybe this company is gonna struggle, maybe it's not doing so well, maybe the profits are a little bit lower on this. However, in year five, we believe profits are gonna be X and Y, Z. And so they then go, okay, well, I'll allocate capital to this because the decision-making process is slightly different for people with bigger money. For us, it's a case of how we're gonna make some money, how we're gonna have a good risk reward ratio in our trade. But for people who have got billions to allocate, the decision is, I need to allocate, I have to allocate it. I have no choice but to allocate this money. You can't just leave it in your account. You have to put, if you put it in cash, then it's an allocation in cash. And of course, you're getting a negative interest rate potentially for that, depending on where you are. So their decision is, right, where do I allocate it to get the best return? And when the returns are so poor from cash and from bonds, and they kind of go, well, I don't really want to be fully into other stuff like gold, or I don't want to be fully into this or that, they go, okay, well, I'll allocate it to these companies, because even in five years, even if they're doing a bit better, I think they will, even the share price stays the same and goes up to 
4% over five years, I'm still doing way better than I would have been uh, with the dividends and stuff, having it in cash. So the decision-making process is a lot different, don't forget, guys, for these big funds. I'm not saying this is the right thing, I'm just saying this is what's going through my mind when I'm thinking about you know, what's happening with the markets, where it's gonna go, how it's behaving. So the other thing to think about, guys, is the Fed obviously pumping money in. They're piling money in, as of course the UK, doing a lot to support businesses with a lot of grants, uh, with a lot of the furlough scheme, with these bounce back loans. There's lots of money being pumped in by most countries to keep things going. Now, there's an argument of, you know, what's going to happen in the future, how we're going to pay it back. But, you know, in the cycle of where the market's going, that might well be enough to pump the markets up. So the question is, is that enough to keep things sustained as they start to peel these, this support level back? Will the economy be able to uh, kind of stand on its own two feet? The other thing to think about, guys, I've noticed recently is the narrative around how they're opening things up. This is UK-based specifically, but I know in the US as well, very similar. It was a case of, oh, everything's going to have to be really different and we're going to be miles apart from each other and you, you might be lucky if you can eat at a restaurant you know, at the end of the year. That seems to have changed. You know, they seem to have looked and gone, you know what, we need to get things open. I know in the UK, they're thinking about a two meter thing is now going to one meter. And for restaurants, that basically means profitability or not. Two meters means you're at 30% capacity. One meter might mean you're at 70% capacity. It means running at profit versus running at a loss. So when they start to think, okay, well actually we can open things up. Maybe masks are better, maybe PPE, maybe these sneeze screens, maybe we can go back to how we were, but just with a little bit of protection. Maybe it's not a case of shutting everything down. In that case, things might be back to where they were and there might even be pent up demand that flies in and people's behavior might be different. So that could be what people are looking forward to and thinking and saying, okay, you know what, even if we go back to you know, flying, for example, but the fact that people are gonna be wearing masks and there's gonna be this and that and the other, then it's gonna be the same, it's just very, very slightly different in terms of what people are doing to wash their hands and hygiene. So. That's something that may well be fueling things. The other thing is, you know, where will interest rates go now? In a day, guys, interest rates being so low fuels, massively fuels rallies. Because again, back to the initial point of where do you put your money to get the return, but also, of course, companies being able to borrow money so cheaply to invest in their business. It is ridiculously cheap to borrow money right now for companies, and that is good for business. It means they can invest, it means they can build that factory, it means they can invest in that technology, it means they can spend and look to the future. Now, there is an argument here we haven't got time for to talk about you know, taking on debt, etc. but generally speaking, low interest rate environment is good. So if the economy comes back at full steam, all co co you know, coal, coal fire burning massively, and they've got low interest rates as well, then you know this, this is what people are looking for and thinking, wow, this thing could rip. Okay, so where are the best trades? There's no doubt this could pause. I'm not making any predictions here, guys. You know, I'm a short-term trader. I look for patterns. I've got my setups and strategies I work for. However, work for me. However, I like to think about what's working. I like to think about the bigger picture, who's doing what. So there are still stocks out there and individual markets and maybe some currency pairs as well that are actually offering good short opportunities. Of course, there's currency pairs offering good short opportunities. It's a pair against one or the other. But from the stock perspective, there's still lots of stocks that are struggling, lots of companies that are struggling. So it's being much more focused on individual names and spotting the opportunity. And if you want to short the broader indices, it's waiting for some kind of catalyst. You know, you've got to recognize the momentum is going at the moment, rallies are happening, it could go on for a long period of time, we could end up you now with a multi-year rally, or it could kind of peter out and things start to, you know, the, the situation is very, very fluid. It's very, very dynamic. And so for us as shorter term traders, if you're a shorter term trader watching this, it's a lovely environment because there's volatility, uh, there's lots of actions, lots of things moving, lots of markets moving. We can get our teeth really stuck into it. But if you're a kind of a longer term investor, it's challenging. You go, okay, you know, do I kind of stick capital in here and look for a rise and maybe am I chasing things? It's a tricky environment to trade. However, listen guys, the, the, there's no better time at the moment to be a trader than now. There is so much stuff going on, we are sport for choice. The volatility is there, there are short names out there to trade, there are long names out there to trade, there's mean reversion plays, there's momentum ignition plays, there's loads of stuff going on. Yes, we have had a period where the currencies went very quiet for a while, but now they've started to expand their volatility, now things have started to kick off. So, 
What's gonna happen in the future? Hey guys, who knows? No one could have predicted what was going on. No one can predict what's gonna happen. Uh, but in the day, if you just keep an eye on the charts, if you just keep an eye on uh, how price is moving, try to disconnect a little bit from what you're seeing because it is confusing, don't get me wrong. You see the main street, all those job losses, and you see the market flying, and we try to come up with some reasons why but in the day, it is what it is. So price rules all, tape rules all, but still keeping abreast of what's going on. And let's see what happens. If you've got any ideas, I'm really interested to hear what you guys input because there's some clever guys out there are watching these videos, some really good traders and good thinkers. Let me know in the comment section below what you think is going to happen next with coronavirus. Where are we going to go with the economy? What sort of stocks are going to do well? Where's the market going to go? Do you think we're too high? Do you think we're just getting started? How's it going to work out? Because guys, no one really knows, but it's super interesting to find out. Take care, keep your risk management. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.